What's up guys, in today's video, we're doing a full restore in this 30 year old 1992 Bayliner. Let's go. Guys, like always, if you get any value out of this, please hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification. So every time we make a video, it will pop up and all of the products that we use in this video will be in the description section down below. If you click those links to purchase those products, we appreciate you guys for that. Okay, I'm gonna leave this very simple, got this job off of the internet, I think through a Facebook ad. Uh, we were through texting, calling, we finally came out to come do the boat. The boat is pretty oxidized. The customer um, just basically said she just wants to get it cleaned up for uh, the boating season. She wasn't necessarily interested in getting it sanded, which, you know, I don't blame her. It's a little pricey um, for what needed to be done. So what we're doing in this video is we're actually gonna do some compounding and I'm also gonna do a little bit of wet sanding for free that I'm gonna throw in because the sanding will actually make your job just a little easier and uh, it really doesn't take you that much time. So we're gonna throw in a little bit of sanding in some areas, but for the most part, we're just doing a compound uh, polish and a sealant on this boat to get it ready so that they could go on the lake with confidence because she said she was like i just feel embarrassed and i was like well hey look when we're done it's gonna look so good that i promise this little bay liner is gonna look really really good so well, that's what we're gonna do today we're doing a full inside and out we're gonna get the seats kind of cleaned up she wasn't too worried about the inside thank god and uh, that's also what i told her too was hey i can spend a little more on the outside getting some of this oxidation off um, if you want to save some time on the inside and she agreed to that so she was cool with that so i'm going to give the inside just a nice clean get the seats kind of cleaned up clean out the compartments um, but we're going to focus most of our time on the exterior of the boat so with that said let's go ahead and look at it and uh, we're just going to hop right into it we're going to give it a wash and start detailing it let's go all right guys so here is our boat um i think it's about a 20 foot bay liner she's pretty oxidized as you could tell right here so in this back area we're going to do a little bit of dry sanding very quickly and i'm going to show you guys that in this video and then this obviously is the sun side uh i did do a test spot right here already to see if what we were going to do is going to work and it was she was really happy with the test spot up here we ended up having to do a little bit of sanding because you could see how chalky this is so it's pretty funky now could you buff this absolutely but it's um you really want to close off those pores so what i think we're going to do and this may change is you can see our test spot right here where we did the buff only and it just doesn't look very good at all so we're going to give this white just a very quick wet sand um, i may even do it by hand just to do it very quickly run down it and then we're going to do our compounding steps overall we're just trying to get this boat looking as best as we can and not have the oxidation come right back the second she puts it in the water so we want to make sure that we do a really good job so that our detailing and our work will actually stand up over time not just make it look shiny for a little bit and then you know it turns to crap in a in a couple weeks Okay, I'm gonna throw my phone up on the tripod over here. And the first thing we're gonna do is give it a nice wash. It's pretty nasty. So I'm gonna hook up the pressure washer foam cannon. I'm just gonna use a little bit of um, uh, all-purpose cleaner with a little bit of Dawn dish soap just to go ahead and give it a clean. And then we're gonna hop to our detail. Let's go. Okay, so we're just gonna start off with a foam cannon. This is just a quick wash to get the dirt off of the boat. I did spray a decontamination spray on there to get a little bit of fallout. There were some little rust particles and stuff on the boat and just, you could almost feel a texture on the boat. So I did spray that on there. It'll turn purple. It'll basically eat off the contaminants and you rinse it off and that's it. And that was our cleaning process to start with. So I am just gonna go ahead and throw this in for free, a quick wet sand on the top white here mainly on this side just because it's so dry so we're gonna go ahead and just do that real quick while it's wet just hit a quick wet sand and then down here we're just gonna do our buffing steps up here we're gonna sand very quick sand just to level out some of that crazy oxidation that way it looks the best for the customer and uh yeah so let's go ahead and hop to the sanding 
Okay, so we just did this very quick wet sand by hand. This literally took me, I think, about 10 minutes total just to do the top. I really made sure I got on those edges by hand. All I have here is 1000 grit Merca Aberlon. And really what it did was just clear the surface, cleared the chalk so that we could have a nice smooth surface. All right, so that is it. We got her all washed up. We did the very quick wet sand up here on the top. Got that nice and smooth. Some of that oxidation was just so, you know, most of the times oxidation is very, uh, it's not level, right? So it's cloudy. It looks super splotchy. When you just give it a, a, a just a very nice, quick, wet sand, even by hand, it just levels it out. And if you could feel the boat right now, it just feels so much smoother than it was. And now, you know, this isn't going to permanently fix it, but it just knocked off that top layer of oxidation. Now it leaves a nice, perfect finish for us to go ahead and do our buffing step. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm actually probably going to just start right here and I'm gonna do all the white down and then i'll probably do the blue get this side done and then probably hop to the other side all right let's go ahead and hop to our first cutting step after that light wet sand uh the sanding marks were very consistent because i stayed very consistent with my hand motions one thing when you're wet sanding you want to keep it very consistent so that your marks are consistent now we're going to run with our white wool pad 1.25 heavy cutting wool pad on the rotary with the shine supply heavy cut this stuff is super heavy grit it is really, really hot outside right now. Um, here in Redding, California, it is about 106. So uh, it was fluctuating between 104 and 106 all day while I was doing this. So the compounds typically break down. So what I was doing was I was running my rotary pretty slow. And if you notice during the summertime, whenever it heats up, you're gonna wanna run your machine a little slower because these compounds will kind of melt down and break down a little faster. So I typically had my machine on around 1200 RPM, roughly the whole time, between 1200 and about 1500 was about about my cutting speed and as you can see i just stayed very consistent with the side to side up down side to side motion on the very top and the blue as you can see right here in the bay liner it came out really really good with this heavy cut this heavy cut compound will get out the 1000 grit sanding marks with no problem you just do have to put a decent amount of pressure with your heavy cutting wool and you're really taking your time doing your cutting step and then once you're done with the cutting step now we're ready for step two and that is going to be the shine supply chop top medium cut compound with the yellow wool pad this is really going to take out all of the holograms and swirls that the heavy cut put in and it's going to leave a dang near perfect finish this yellow wool pad you typically want to run it maybe about that same 1200 rpm uh, just during the summer months during the winter months you can speed it up a little bit only because that heat will break down the abrasive in the chop top that yellow wool with the chop top when you run it right and nice and slow it will leave a nice finish and that will leave you a great finish to lead to your third step and the better you do that second step with the white wool guys it's going to make the polishing step very easy and the reason why i wanted to use the max shine m8 sv2 was to show you how easy the polishing step can be so all we did was we used the white ccs foam pad which you can also use the orange the orange might get you a little more cutting power but all i had was the white so i did the white ccs with the chop top and i did it very quickly just a good side to side up down move on and it polished it out literally perfectly finished and that's part of why i like doing that second yellow pad is because that yellow pad's really going to pull out those heavy uh, those heavy swirls and once you do that now the white pad is just going to really polish it out to leave it a perfect finish Okay, so we got all of our cutting steps done on this side of the boat. Now we're gonna go to this side of the boat. I'm not really gonna film the whole thing. I might show a couple clips, but I'm doing all the same cutting steps as I did on this side. And then once we're done with all of that, that's when we're gonna do our wash. We're gonna detail the inside, get all that cleaned, and then we're gonna top it off with our protective layer. So let's go ahead and just get back to it. I'm gonna do all the same steps on this side. Okay, so now we're just on this side of the boat. So we do all three of our steps on the one side. Now we switch all of our extension cords and everything over to this side the boat and we basically do it all over again so we have our heavy cut with the heavy cut white wool pad and then we're going to follow up with chop top with the yellow wool and then we're going to follow up with the ccs with the chop top again now the reason why i'm liking the chop top uh, compound is because it's a nice heavy cut compound that will diminish into a nice finishing polish and that's why it's really cool because you can use it as your second and your third step it finishes down perfectly with the uh with the foam pad so you don't need another polish and just another thing 
Uh, it's a really, really great product, guys. So afterwards, just go ahead and give it a nice Dawn wash, get all of the compound and everything off of the surface, and we're gonna be prepping for our protection. So anytime you do your correction, go ahead, wash it with Dawn dishwash and soap afterwards to get all the oil, all the compound off to leave the surface perfectly uh, shiny, ready to go. Whew. Well, guys, that is it for today. I am going to call it a day. I gotta go pack some detail U orders. For all of you guys that buy the the uh, the products after you watch these videos, that's what I do in the afternoon. So I've been detailing during the day and shipping stuff at night. But dude, I think for a 30 year old boat, which let's just say guys, this is in the shade, but that's not bad for a 30 year old boat. One thing that I always tell myself is to trust the process. You know, when I, you know, as I'm detailing this, man, I'm always questioning like, is it gonna come out? Is it gonna do what I want it to do? Because when I don't do the full wet sand, sometimes it's questionable, you know? And, and I don't like that feeling, but you know, I always have to remember like, even after you're like doing your heavy cut and it's like looking weird, it's looking splotchy, always remember, trust the process. You know, it's when you do process one, step one, step two, step three, step four, when you're done and you've trusted the process, you know, and then you look back and then your work looks nice, guys. So. Trust the process, don't stop halfway through, do your steps, do it right, stay consistent, make the boat shiny, let's go. All right, what's up guys? It is now day two on this boat. As you could tell, the boat is looking really good, nice and shiny. When I got here, I just kind of looked it over and it's looking really good. I'm super happy with it. So that's always a plus. <laughs> you always kind of panic, like maybe I'll come back the next day and it'll be splotchy, but I uh, just gotta trust the process and it looks amazing. So I do have to finish up a little bit of polishing on this tow rail right here from here back that I did not get, uh, get to do yesterday. And I wanted to clean the boat before I left because it had compound all over it. So I did wash the boat yesterday like you guys saw. So all I'm gonna do today is hit that one, that top area right here with the polish and then we're gonna go ahead and get to detailing the inside, do all the interior work add our protection and then we'll be gone. So I'm hoping to be done in roughly maybe three and a half hours today. So overall that would probably put us right at about, um, maybe about nine hours total for this job. So, all right, let's go ahead and get to work. I'm gonna hop to polishing. We're gonna wash detail and we're gonna get to it. Let's go. So the reason why I really washed it before I left yesterday is I really don't like leaving compounds sitting on, on the seats and the windows and the gaskets. You really wanna clean that off. So it was kind of a headache to have to wash it then come back, polish it and then rewash it, but it really was not that big of a deal. So we just had to go ahead, clean up the rest of the polishing on the blue and the white up top, and then we're gonna move to our detailing side of the detail. So we went ahead, got all the correction, now it's time to do all of our cleaning. All right, so we went ahead and just rewashed the exterior that we just polished, and now we're gonna hop onto the inside of the boat. As you can see here, we just have a little bit of super clean, diluted. Um, I do dilute it pretty good for the seat cushions, guys. I used to do 50-50, now I do about 20% um, super clean and do the rest water. You have to be very uh, careful with super clean. Super clean is a very, very strong degreaser, so if you spray it on the side of your boat, it can scar gel coat sometimes, so you really wanna keep it nice and diluted. Um, you know, and, and just make sure that if you buy super clean at the store, you just keep it very diluted for your seats. And you always want to wash it off with Dawn afterwards. So if you notice here, I have my drill brush, I'm scrubbing in the seats, I'm cleaning the super clean, and then we just give it a nice Dawn wash after to rinse off all of the super clean. You don't want to leave that on the seat cushions. And then we will follow it up with the protection uh, afterwards at the very end. So just make sure when you do the super clean on the seats and you're using your scrub brush and your detail brush to get the seats nice and clean, always wash it with Dawn or any type of soap afterwards to just remove it on the carpets we did just use a little bit of dawn and um i used just a little bit of super clean just on the carpets as well and it cleaned up really nice the lady wasn't really paying too much to have the interior done but i wanted to make it look nice for her so what i did was i just sprayed a little bit of dawn a little bit of super clean on the carpets used my drill brush and it really cleaned up really nice now at this point we're just sucking out all the water sucking out all the debris off the floors to get the floors absolutely perfect with our shop vac Now we're gonna hop to our sun setter. This is the UV vinyl protection. It really does kind of clean up the seats and it leaves a nice vinyl protection. It actually makes the water bead off the seats. It's actually a really good surface. Plus you can use it on console. So like any vinyl uh, toppings underneath in your compartments, you can kind of use this to help it maintain the seat cushions a little better. It's very comparable to 303. So if you're used to using 303, this is just about the same, if not maybe a little better. It's great for the seat cushions and the consoles.
Once we vacuum out the floors, we get everything pretty much perfect. We're just gonna go ahead and do our glass, get our glass streak free. We are using Underdog WSP water spot remover. This is a very quick process to get the water marks off. The water spot remover really does a great job. It's a really good acid base cleaner that will get those water marks off and then leave the window streak free. After I did the water mark, I went ahead and just did the shine supply aftermath to just clean up the glass, get off any uh, residue from the acid base cleaners, and this will just kind of clean up the inside. What I also did in this process was just kind of spruce up around the console, get everything nice and perfectly detailed for the customer just so it leaves us our protective layer. So at this point, the boat is clean. We're doing the motor. We're cleaning up everything. We're just going over everything, making sure the whole boat is literally perfect. That way, the last thing we have to do is just add our protection, either our wax or our ceramic coatings. Whew. All right, that is it. We have got everything prepped, fully detailed, fully cleaned. The outside has no watermarks. It is ready to be coated officially. So we're gonna apply Shine Supply Beadlock Marine on the exterior. We're just doing one quick coat. This coat should last, you know, relatively a year or more if they maintain it properly. And that's just the way that I can ensure my good work. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and hop to it. I'm gonna throw you up on the, uh, on the tripod. We're gonna go ahead, just add our layer of ceramic. We're gonna put it on by hand with the applicator pad level it right off. It is a really hot day, so it's gonna flash pretty fast. So it should be a pretty quick process. We'll probably do about a five foot section at a time. Apply it, level it, apply it, level it, move down all the way around the exterior of the boat. Let's go. Let's hop to our ceramic coating process. This is a pretty quick process on these smaller boats. It's a 20 foot boat. I was able to do 10, about 10 feet at a time. So if you notice, I'll do the whole side um, one and then go down the rest. So I basically broke the boat up into two. I was able to apply the coating, level it right away. Now it was, I believe like 104, 106, like I said, it was firing off and it was leveling very quickly, almost to like 30 seconds to one minute. So I know that I've made videos in the past going five minutes. You definitely don't wanna do five minutes when it's really hot like this and that's why you always want to check once you understand ceramics and stuff you'll understand like hey it's super hot i know that i could fly but until then do a small test spot wait until it's tacky and then level it off that's the best thing you can do we went ahead and did our coating on the entire exterior of this boat like i said i broke it into 10 feet sections so i applied 10 foot leveled it applied 10 foot leveled it did the blue applied 10 feet leveled it applied 10 feet leveled it and then we were done this Shine Supply Beadlock Pro Marine, it's great coating. It's super easy to go on. It'll give you easily a year of protection and it's just the best option for your customers. And what you're gonna hear in just a second is I really didn't even use all that much product, which is a plus. So you can either seal your boat at this point or give it a coating. Either one will work. All right, guys, we just finished up ceramic coating it. We are pretty much done. We got one more step just to top it off with the SiO2. Uh, we usually want to let it sit. We're, it's really hot. It's like 104 right now out here in Northern California in Redding, and it is straight up sunlight. So it's going to only take this ceramic maybe 30 minutes to cure. So I'm going to give it about an hour. While I'm doing that, I'm just kind of cleaning up my tools, packing up, and then the very last thing we're going to do is put the SiO2 topper on it. But I wanted to bring up a point um, that I haven't really talked on. This boat right here, I believe it's 20 foot, maybe 19 or 20 feet. And, you know, I did the, all the correction and I ceramic coated it. And I used to think ceramic coating would cost me so much, okay? And it used to with some of the older products out there. And there was a lot of price gouging, if you ask me, in the, uh, in the ceramic industry. But... Um, I used to think it would cost me so much, but you got to think, guys. I just I just sam did one simple, easy, fast coat on this boat, and this is as much product as I used. So the bottle was at the top of the label, and I'm down here. So I used a, roughly about a fingertip um, amount to do the entire exterior of this boat. And honestly, I tend to put too much ceramic on then not enough. I'm, I'm known to drench my pad and coating and you probably don't even need to use as much as I did. So keep that in mind guys. So as a, as a detailing company, you know, I just, I did a really good ceramic protective layer and I only used maybe $40 worth of product. Now, if you compare that to wax where you can get a whole 32 ounce bottle for 40 bucks, you know, there is a bigger price market for this, but it doesn't have to cost you as much as you possibly would think. So if you have a 20 foot boat, you can pretty much do the exterior of your boat with about 50 mils, if that. So a 100 mil bottle, you'll be able to get a few boats out of it. 
So that's just a little bit of a pro tip. I want you guys to know 20 foot boat exterior only, which, you know, it's a pretty small boat. It only took me about a fingertip um, amount of product. Let's go. I also want to make this point too. Anytime you're doing the coatings, please wear gloves. I'm I'm a dummy and I, I never have gloves. I really need to because I can already feel a little bit of a headache starting. So honestly, my wife gets on to me. Everybody gets on to me about not wearing gloves. So I apologize for that. I need to get my gloves. So when you're doing coating, always make sure to wear some type of hand protection because it will give you a funky headache. All right, this is our very last final step. This is the SiO2 Punch It. It is a top coat that's gonna make it super, super hydrophobic, make the coating super easy to clean. This is also gonna be the spray that you're going to use to maintain your boat from here on out. So if you're a boat owner, this is the product that you wanna wipe your boat down once a month with. Or if you are a detailing company, either tell your customers to keep their boat wiped down with this once a month or have a maintenance plan. This is the best product to keep the boat looking fresh and clean. All right, guys, that is officially it. This boat has been fully detailed, ceramic coated, and topped off with our SiO2. It's protected. Now, the only thing you have to do at this point is either tell your customer or if you're a boat owner yourself to keep it maintained properly. You're gonna wanna get a good SiO2 soap or a pH balanced soap, and you also wanna buy the Punch It. I'll have links to all the maintenance products that we recommend down below. Also recommend the Aftermath spray that we use to keep it maintained to keep the watermarks off of the boat. Anytime you use it, and the you know, as you're rinsing it, just spray the Aftermath like we did to get those uh to get those watermarks off of the fresh boat this boat is looking so good i'm honestly really blown away i did not think it would actually come out this good i'm really happy for this boat being 30 years old it looks absolutely amazing so i know the customers are going to be blown away when they see it so guys if you got any value out of this video please hit the like button hit that subscribe button hit that little bell notification so that every time we make videos it will pop up and we'll see you guys on our next video let's go